Searching for Sarah, excerpt one. Sarah was here again, soft this time. I make light of her departure as I awake to these dramatic parts of a hypnic jerk. Is this awake or asleep? Can I pardon us both? So, waking in a failed apparatus between these two places, I groggily have to give in and rouse myself into the usual. A desk is not where one should spend their life, Sarah had begun sputtering last night. It's not a dream. It was not a whisper nor a shout. Coffee hasn't been the same. Morning routine is merely recounting all these little parts of her. Sarah had become far too embedded. Sarah was different two nights ago, cherry blonde and a haze in her eyes, apt to be more keen than I. The whisper was different, this time a subtle squeak, like when a mouse runs in a field. Maybe you are the mouse and I the hawk, making passive aggressive gestures of how we used to talk. Faint we ran a field, up only to yield. Yet Sarah, always Sarah. Sleep is not what sleep should be when we lie upon each other's feet. This feeling of a vertigo, the ride begins, away we go. Four nights ago, a flowing blonde, rivers of her being both here and beyond. My particular vernacular trying to describe her and that of her. In partitions, we should slide a door, Sarah, Cherry blonde, of course. Black hair tonight and lush velvet eyes Sarah had. We were pitched at eight degrees on a tiny skiff making west with no destination. Warm breeze. It was Easter. I only remember because Sarah had come bounding up on deck with this crappy little makeshift basket full of junk she had cobbled together from the galley. A corkscrew, cheap wine, two tiny Hershey kisses, some weird cheese we had bought on our last stop and slightly giggled. Bet you thought I wouldn't remember, huh? She placed it on my lap as I made a slight check into our navigation. I yawned and she sat beside me and placed her head upon my shoulder. We fell into the sea, the boat beneath us with no vibration then. I ached to sail west forever to continue in this nautical pleasure we had found. It became almost eerie, the silence save the lapping of waves. Her gentle fingers as she took my hand looked at me as if tomorrow were only going to be a promise and today was much more important. Cuddling the current as we had done many times before, but in so many different iterations. Sarah that night, a mistress of the ocean. Sarah to haunt me forever, possibly a clever endeavor, frightened in the core, yet we began the journey just once more. Sarah to haunt me forever, trying hard to grasp us together as the nether place between the both of us seem. Sarah still haunting, me trying to redeem. Sarah shall haunt me forever, if little words made bigger problems Maybe then we would incite a plethora. Happenstance, a fleeting glance, a sleepy part of a repost. Sarah to haunt me forever, even as I make my morning toast. We walk along a jagged beach, the many things I offered thee. Two small fruit did then I hand sow, a soft ripe mango and tomato. When it holds a large hard pit, the other many seeds to spit. For as we crunched the beach beneath, I was solving my own belief. Yet there are two who share this time, short of rhythm, short of rhyme. Why bother to acknowledge the two upon the beach? Release it now before impeach becomes the priest. Sarah was blonde again last night, looked like a fresh dye. But when she leveled me with her gaze, the same two pools of freshly drying ink in her eye. I walked into the bedroom late and tired. She was on the floor crying, not nestled in bed, trying to figure out yet once again 
was this transference of the current things in my head. We were at the Candlewood last night, dinner with old friends. Sarah kept side-eyeing me about my stupid Confucius jokes. Dessert wasn't very good. Said our goodbyes and retired to find a little nest we could cuddle up in and fade. Sarah sat on my lap and lightly sang, Rain, rain, go away, come again another day. It was a warm and slightly breezy evening. She was drunk and had that glisten in her eye. I pulled a blanket up and around us. She fell into my neck like a soft weight. Once she was fully asleep, I moved her a bit, watched as Sarah was the same and changed and cried.